everybody. So thank you for choosing to watch another video from this channel. Today I'm going to talk about HPLC, Agile and HPLC pump and pump related problems that you may encounter during your uh, HPLC analysis. This is the second video about this subject. I have already made one video about the Agile and HPLC pump and pump head and the problem related to the pump head such as uh, no flow or high back pressure. So if you are interested to watch the first part, you could click on the link below and take a look at the, uh, that video. Now today I'm going to talk about two other components of Agile and HPLC pump. One of them is the flow damper and the second one is a gradient proportion valve. So before I do that, I would like to just go through the flow path in the pump uh, during the operation of the, the, this equipment. Uh, as you know, like all of you know, the majority of the HVLCs have four lines. You have mobile phase A, B, C, D. So we have four lines coming to the, the gradient proportion valve. And as the pump operates, it will draw in these mobile phases according to the uh, program that you wrote in your acquisition method. These mobile phases will go through these holes, go to the mixing chamber, and then they will draw out of the gradient portion, proportion valve through the operation of the pump. From the uh, gradient proportion, it will go into the inlet valve, the unit at the bottom of the pump. And then from the inlet valve, the pump pushes it out to the outlet valve. And from the outlet, it will go to the flow damper. And then the flow, uh, from the flow damper, it, again, it is drawn back into the pump and goes into the bottom of the pump head. And from the pump head, the second piston in the pump pushes the mobile phase through the purge valve into the equipment. And it will go to the auto sampler, to the column compartment, to the detector, to the waste, and so on. So now let me talk about the gradient proportion valve uh, and uh, the problem that you may see a face related to this component. The gradient proportion valve will got four solenoid valves and they will open and close based on the program that you have in your acquisition method. Let's say you ask the system to give you 50% A, 50% B and zero of the, the other two mobile phases and so the solenoid valve will open halfway through in A and a B and will shut close in C and a D. And it will draw in half A, half B into the mixing chamber. Now, if this unit doesn't work properly, what will happen is that probably you will not get the, get the composition that you are expecting. Instead of, let's say, 50 A, 50 B, you will get some other composition. And uh, what you will notice in your uh, chromatography is that the peaks will not appear where you expect them to appear. Maybe they will be like, uh, too late or too early or other places. And the problem could be because of one of the solenoid valves, the components inside is stuck. Or the solenoid valve doesn't close or solenoid valve doesn't even open. So later in this video, I will go and open up these solenoid valves, one of them at least, and I will show you how it looks like inside. But before I do that, for the troubleshooting or resolving your problem, you are not going to open up the gradient proportion valve. What you're going to do is that you're going to wash the unit, you know, get rid of all your mobile phases, replace them with water, maybe warm water, wash it overnight if you have to, switch to 50% IPA, then switch back to 100% IPA, and the component inside will regenerate when they are exposed to the 100% IPA. <clears throat> now, after washing, you will do, uh, well, your metrology team will probably do gradient proportion valve test and they will give you the okay that the system is working fine and you will start using it again. It is possible, there is a possibility that your problem comes back again. Uh, in this case, maybe you need to consider uh, doing something more than washing on the gradient proportion valve. 
Uh, number one choice is that, uh, which is the easiest choice and the or option, or but it's the most ex expensive option, is that we replace the proportion of a buy a brand new one and install it. That's very easy but very costly. Option number two is that is the washing of A and B won't resolve your issue, uh, then I would recommend that you write a note on the system uh, or usage logbook or whatever and designate the system that everybody should use from now on C and a D instead of A and a B. The reason is that the majority of the uh, methods used in pharmaceutical are using line A and a B and the soil load valves C and a D are hardly used, so they are actually brand new. So by not using A and a B as switching to C and a D, you will, you will be able to prolong the usage of this component. So if you had five years using A and a B, probably you will get another five years from C and a D. Now, <clears throat> option number three is that you may want to attempt to fix it by opening it up. And um, I don't encourage everybody to do that. Probably you're going to do some damage. And uh, a person who has done it before and succeeded in doing it should probably attempt doing that. But uh, for, this, for the purpose of this video, I don't mind opening this up and we're going to take a look at what's inside of one of the valves. First of all, um, the, there is a screw on the top of this side of the mold that I don't recommend touching it. Probably has to do with the calibration of the, uh, the unit. And if you want to open it, uh, you have to use the four screw on the corner. And later on, I will show you a close-up of these uh, components when I get back to my uh, computer. So I'm going to unscrew the top ones, the four on the corner. And I'm holding on to it because there's a spring. If you don't hold, it will jump. And you're going to have pieces flying all over the place. Okay, I have this is third screw, one screw removed, two screw, third one. And I'm going to push away this pump out of the way, and the fourth one. I'm still holding on the side of the valve because again, as I said, there's a spring here. If you don't, it will jump and you're going to have pieces all over the place. So I will keep it flat, I will slowly loose it, I let it go, and I will remove the top sign a lot. And as you said, see, there is a spring and there is a plunger. You remove these two, there is a black uh, piece, remove that, and there is a very tiny uh, there are three pieces. There is, there is a sapphire a sphere, there is a cone shaped uh, piece on top of sapphire, and there is a membrane. And most likely, uh, these three parts, uh, these pieces are consumable. And you, by replacing these and putting a new one, you will regenerate your, let's say, line B. Okay, let me go back to my computer and I will show you the close up of these parts before I continue. So we are looking at the load valve uh, from the top and uh, as I said before, uh, the screw in the middle has something to do with the calibrating the load valve itself and we shouldn't be opening that. And in order to uh, dismantle this unit, we need to unscrew the, uh, the four screws on the corner. Now, when we uh, open up the load valve, uh, as you have seen uh, before, uh, there is a plunger and uh, there is a spring that you need to remove it until, until we get to the lower part. And as we remove the lower part, uh, this is what we see. There is a membrane, there is a sapphire sphere, and there is a semi-cylinder uh, that sits on the top of the sapphire. So this is the close-up of these four parts. Okay, so I'm going to put them back uh, to the original condition and uh, I will put these 
dark one on the top. I will put my plunger. It is not that easy. Uh, I will put the plunger inside the side of the valve. I will attempt to do it that way. Which I succeed. And screw back the unit. And use this washer. These parts are very small and they are not easy to grab. I will screw one. As, as soon as I screw one of them, it will be easier to hold on to the rest of them. And as I said, uh, probably your option of washing is your first choice. Uh, Replacing the unit with a brand new one is costly, it is the easiest as I said. And uh, designating uh, the system to be used like C and AD is not a bad choice. And what I just show you by replacing these components, uh, it is tricky. The, I've looked at the website, I did not see Agilent even supplying the, uh, these components or parts as a replacement. As if the Agilent has already decided that you should buy the whole unit. And even finding those three small pieces, I mean the membrane, a sapphire sphere, and the little cone-shaped plastic, probably you have to salvage it from the old parts that you tossed in the garbage. And, um, and then the, I'm not sure, you know, if you put this back together, you will pass the gradient proportion of the line. So, but anyway, if the unit doesn't work, uh, what worse could it get? And it doesn't work, so you have nothing to lose. Uh, so this is for people who like to experiment. Uh, so this is all I wanted to talk about the gradient proportion valve. I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to talk about briefly about the flow damper. The function of flow damper is to take the um, uh, mobile phase flow, which is uh, has a frequency to it, and it's this pulsation, it's this pulsing. Uh, into a mobile phase or a flow which is uh, continuous and is non-pulsation. Uh, non uh, now, if the damper don't work properly, what you will see in your baseline is that it is zigzagging, it's just jumping up and down, up and down, there is a pulse. And as you increase the flow of your pump, you will realize that this pulsation also increases. So that's the indication that maybe your flow damper is not working properly. But uh, I would encourage people not to blame the damper first. Uh, there may be other reasons for your baseline fluctuations, such as leaking the system, or maybe your lamp it doesn't work. And through my experience, I might have recalled only once that the damper had to be replaced. So uh, my recommendation to you is that do not blame the damper and uh, leave this replacement of the damper as your last choice. Okay, uh, this is all, again, I wanted to show you at this moment. I'm going to go back to my uh, computer and probably show you a few more slides to summarize all the problems with the uh, pump. Okay, talk to you soon. So I'm going to wrap up this video by going over the three components of uh, Agilent 1100 pump. Uh, the pump head, the gradient proportion valve, and the flow damper. Uh, but these are the picture of the 1100 to the right. Um, I, I really try not to endorse any uh, manufacturer of this, these systems, uh, but I really cannot hide my interest on the Agilent 1100. Uh, this is a remarkable machine, and um, I, I shouldn't be saying this, but I, I, I have a interest in this uh, uh, equipment so the the pump head the problems that could associate with this uh, part of the pump is a high back pressure a poor baseline and the the retention time shift in your peaks or sometimes you don't see peak at all and this is what i covered in my uh, first video that I did mention that the problem with the 
uh, inlet and outlet valves uh, could cause the no flow or, or uh, poor flow or pro flow fluctuation that leads to poor baseline and also the high back pressure that you have uh, this purge valve filter is clogged with all these garbage uh, the gradient proportion valve the problem you're going to have is that you're definitely peak retention time or sometimes no peak at all because the composition of the mobile phase that you're asking in your uh, from the system and you have it in your acquisition method uh, this gradient proportion valve is not able to deliver it and the, the last one the flow damper we're going to have a poor baseline because it is not able to uh, remove this oscillating uh, motion of the uh, pump piston and is not able to give you a, a steady or a smooth uh, flow mm, thank you very much for watching this video and um, references is definitely Agilent technology all the information that Agilent is providing about their equipment and if you like this video I appreciate you push a like button and if uh, you have uh, information about the pump and the repair definitely I appreciate you write me a comment or if they, I made a mistake or there's an error and I really like to hear from you thank you very much and have a good time bye